All right, hey y'all. Let's go ahead and do this um, it's an exam to review. Really, it's more like a practice exam. Um, so I want you guys to to know that these practice exams, I do them to help you. Um, and I do them so that you can practice your skills before you go ahead and, and do the exam, right? So before you do this, you want to make sure that you're well studied, that you already have a really strong grasp of everything we've talked about in the notes. Um, and everything that we've gone over. And this this is just kind of meant to be like a last test before you actually go take your test. So um, it might bring some concepts together, you might have some aha moments, but for the most part, you should already have a general idea of how to do everything that's in this exam before you get to the actual exam. All right, so that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Um, there is one concept maybe that I want to lecture about before I get too far into there, and that is um, strain. So, and the reason I want to go over this is so it can kind of settle in your brain before we get any further. Um, remember that the size of atoms gets bigger as we go down into our left. Right? So if we're looking at a periodic table, let me pull it up, like this, and I said what's bigger, carbon or fluorine? Carbon is bigger than fluorine. And if I say what's bigger, carbon or bromine, bromine's way the heck bigger than carbon. And when you get things that are really big next to other things that are really big, Remember, these things are made up that moving around the outside is electrons. They don't like each other. They really repel each other. So you get a lot of strain if you try to push two things together. And it's, it makes a high energy molecule if you have things that are really big next to each other. They want to push apart. And I just want that to settle in your brain a little bit before we move forward because it's going to be a repeating theme that comes up and is not one I did a good job in class ensuring that you understood. So hopefully this will bring some things together. All right. Let's go ahead and get going. It says, give a suitable name for each compound. Okay, this first one, we got a Newman projection here. Zoom in a little bit. So remember, Newman projection, we've got one carbon here and a carbon behind it. So on this one carbon here, I'm going to draw right here. I have an ethyl group, which would look like that, and a methyl group. I'm just going to get rid of that carbon. Let's just make it, this is the carbon. And then another methyl group. Cool. On the carbon behind it that it's attached to, you have an ethyl group and two hydrogens, which we don't need to draw. So essentially, this ends up being your compound right here. So if we look at this compound, maybe if I redraw it a little prettier. If we look at this compound um, and go to name it, remember, we're going to look for the longest chain. I see one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, be that. And then I see that I've got two methyl groups coming off this one, two, third carbon, because we want to go to the, um, this number here. And so I would call this three, three dimethyl. And again, it's one, two, three, four, five, six hexane. Okay, so this one is three, three dimethyl hexane. Put a piece of paper behind it here. Okay, moving on to this one right here. We have, we'll draw it over here, this triangle thing with a wedged chlorine, or a, da a dashed chlorine and a wedged ethyl group coming off of it. So I know this is three things in a row, so we would call this a, it's going to be a cyclopropane. of some sort, but I see that we have these chiral centers here and here. And because we have these chiral centers, we're gonna also want to indicate them. All right, so in order to figure out what the chiral centers are gonna be called, we need to know um, whether they are R or S. Additionally, when we go to name it, and maybe I can go a little further here, we know that this is a chloro group, 
So we only briefly said this in class. We didn't actually do an example. This is a chloro group. Um, if it had been an I, for example, it would have been iodo. If it had been a bromine, it would have been bromo. If it had been an F, it would have been fluoro. So hopefully you can see that pattern there when it comes to halogens. So we have a chloro group and this thing is an ethyl group, right? We got a carbon there and a carbon there. So chloro comes first in the alphabet. So we would call that the one carbon and this one would be two and then we'd have our third carbon there. So this would be one dash chloro, two dash ethyl cyclopropane. All right, so all is good with that, but again, you have two chiral centers, so stereogenic centers. This, this molecule is chiral, and so we want to make sure that, that we indicate which one's which. And this is one of my favorite molecules because it takes a second. You really have to know your rules to know what the R and S configuration of each of these is. So I might end up drawing two because it's going to get a little messy here, but let's start with this chlorine right here or this, this carbon right here that's attached to the chlorine. Okay, so here I have a chlorine group here, a carbon group here, and a carbon group here. This is gonna be my highest atomic number. That's gonna be my priority, right? Now we look at the carbons. Here, I got my piece of paper. Here we have a carbon group here, and a carbon group here. Okay, they're both carbon, but this carbon right here is attached to two hydrogens, another carbon. This carbon right here is attached to three carbons, right? So this one over here is gonna take priority. So this is gonna be my two priority group, and this one up here would be my three. Now, generally we're going around like this in a counterclockwise direction, right? But um, because this hydrogen would be on a wedge, we have to flip it around. So we'd say that this was S normally, but because hydrogen's on the wedge, it's an R. So when we go to write its name, it's gonna be one R because that one carbon had an R configuration, comma. So we put this in parentheses. Let's move on to this next one. I'll end the parentheses there, and this is what it's gonna end up being. Let's move on to this one and see if we can figure out what it is. Okay, so going Looking at each carbon, here we have a carbon that's attached to another carbon. Here we have a carbon that's attached to a chlorine group. And here we have a carbon that's attached to another carbon. So, so far, this is our one priority group, right? Okay, so let's go back and look again. So we're looking at all the things that are attached to this carbon. Going up again, we have this carbon which is attached to another carbon, and this carbon, which was attached to another carbon. Now we have to go to the next carbon, right? So remember you look at each thing and then see what it's attached to next, okay? So this carbon was attached to this carbon, which was attached to that carbon. This carbon was attached to that carbon, which is attached to that carbon. So far they're equal. Now we're all the way at these carbons. This carbon is attached to three hydrogens, but this carbon is attached to a chlorine and another carbon. So that's why this way is gonna get priority up here. And this is gonna be our three. One, two, three. The H happens to be on a wedge. So when we go around this way, we're going clockwise and we can go ahead and keep it as clockwise. So this ends up being two R. So one R, two R, and then the rest of the naming is exactly how we've talked about. So when you, want to, when you have something that's got a stereogenic center, you wanna just put it in parentheses like this indicate which one's which. All right, let's practice that some more. We have this next one, which looks like this. So I've got, appears to be a butane. It's got a wedged chlorine, or excuse me, a dashed chlorine, I keep saying that, and a dashed iodine. Again, this is a one, two, three, four carbon group. So this is some kind of butane. And looking at this butane, um, I want to label it right where, um, where we're doing things alphabetically. 
especially because if I went to label here, if I go one, two, that I hit something on the second carbon, or if I go one, two, I hit something on the second carbon, right? So remember that you wanna go in the direction which is gonna provide the lowest alphabetical order if the numeric order is the same. So my second carbon is gonna be right here because chloro is lower alphabetically than iodo or higher alphabetically. However you wanna look at it, it's closer to A. So this would be two chloro, three iodo butane. But last but not least, you look and see if they're stereogenic centers. And in fact, there are um, this one and that one. So in order to figure out the stereogenic centers, we're just going to do the same thing we did last time, assign priority. Okay. So looking at this carbon right here, let's do the chloro first. This would be priority number one, or chlorine. And next I have a methyl group. And then over here is a lot more stuff. So over here would be my two, and over here would be my three. Normally, we'd go clockwise, right? but hopefully you realize the H is on the wedge. So normally we're going clockwise, but because the H is on one, two, three, but because the H is on a wedge, we're going to go in the opposite direction, okay? So going in the opposite direction would be, what is that, S. So this would be a two S comma. All right, let's look at this next one. Here we have this would be our priority right here, the iodine. Our second priority would be up here, this carbon up here. And then last but not least, this methyl group. So one, two, three. So once again, we are going in a clockwise direction, but because the H is on a wedge, it's gonna flip us to the counterclockwise direction, which would be an S. So this would be two S, three S, two chloro, three iodo, butane. All right, moving on. We have this beautiful thing. So I'll draw it right here. On the dash, we've got this bromo group. So we know there's no question where the numbering is going to start up here. It didn't matter which side we started on because we ended up with something on the two. So then we had to look to the alphabetical. In this case, we come up with something over on this side, whereas there's nothing over here. So our longest chain, by the way, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or you could go up seven as well. It doesn't matter which way you go. This looks kind of the easiest to me. So that will be our seven. This is um, going to be some kind of heptane, right? Okay, so this would be our one carbon, two carbon, three carbon, so it's going to be a two methyl, three bromo, heptane, heptane, but then when I do it, I'm like, oh darn, M and B, hopefully you caught that, the B comes first, so it's not that, it's three bromo. 2-methyl heptane. So sometimes it helps. I, what I really like to do, if you were to look at my own notes when I do this stuff, I actually do 3-bromo. I'll like write it out, and then I'll do 2-methyl. And then I'll figure it all out. Okay. Now, this carbon is not stereogenic. It has, both of them have, like, there's a methyl group there and a methyl group there, so that's not stereogenic. This one is, and so this is going to be a carbon that we're going to have to label as R or S. So just kind of go through and look. This would be our first priority, the bromine, and then we go to the next carbon in this carbon, okay? So this carbon is attached to two hydrogens and another carbon. This carbon is attached to two carbons. Therefore, this is our number two. Again, this, this carbon is attached to two hydrogens and a carbon, but this carbon is attached to two full carbons, and that's why it's our number two. And this gets a three. So we go one, two, three, like this. Currently, we're going in a counterclockwise direction, which would be S, but the H is on a wedge. That low priority one is on a wedge. So we have to flip it. So we go one, two, three, which again is counterclockwise. Now we're going the opposite direction, and that would make this R. 
even though we know it's on the three, there's only one chiral center in this whole thing. So you can just write R. And that would be the answer, R, three bromo, two methyl heptane. Okay, moving on. We have this thing right there. So we've got this chair confirmation. It looks like, whoops, I already messed it up. Better redraw it here. Let's go all the way over here. We've got this chair confirmation. This one's going down and then up. This is on the down and this ethyl group is on the up. Equi both are on equatorial positions. Nice little low energy state. Okay, so now let's go ahead and name it. There you go, so you don't have to look at my scribble. I don't like looking at scribblings. Okay, so we know that this is a cyclohexane, right? Um, all these chair confirmations are cyclohexane. So let's give it a cyclohexane name. Next, we need to number it. You can number it one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. It doesn't matter to me. Let's go one, two, three, four. Or you could have gone one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Because no matter what, they're on one and four are where the carbons are, where these uh, ethyl groups are gonna hang out. So this is a one comma four dash. This is an ethyl group, and this is an ethyl group diethyl cyclohexane and you want to stop there but don't forget we're talking about these chair conformations which tell us if something is trans or cis so when i look at this i see this one goes up right it's equatorial but it still points up and this one points down what that does is it makes it a trans one four diethylcyclohexane. Now, if it had been um, down and down, it would have been a cis 1,4 diethylcyclohexane. So remember, it doesn't matter if it's equatorial or axial, you're looking at where they point. This one's up, this one's down. Even if you flip the chair conformation, this would still be down and that would still be up. They just switch from equatorial to axial. Ooh. And last but not least, we have another cyclohexane, just not with that, not written with the chair confirmation. So it's this one right here. We've got this wedge iota group and a dashed ethyl group. Okay, so we know this is gonna be some kind of iota, ethyl, cyclohexane. We know ethyl comes first alphabetically We know this is gonna come first and this one's second. Um, if you happen to have two of the same things, you don't need to number the carbons. Or if you only have just one thing, if it were just one iodine, you wouldn't need to number them. But I think it's for the sake of just um, ease of saying it, that if you have two different things, you actually write the number one. So one ethyl, one iodo is what this is gonna be. This carbon has to be number one. Okay, now you wanna look at this and you're gonna probably, if you're like me, you look at it and you're like, oh, it's got a wedge and a dash, so it must be R or S. But this carbon, remember, for it to be a stereogenic center, it's gotta be attached to four different things. I have the iodine here, I have the ethyl here, those are two different things. But if you go across and look at all these carbons, you end up back here. So no matter what, these two are actually the same if you go left or if you go right, it's attached to the same thing. So this is not a stereogenic center. That makes this one a little more straightforward because this is just straight up one ethyl, one iodo, cyclohexane. Now, if you had labeled this 
ethyl dash iodo cyclohexane i would not have counted you wrong just so you know um i think this is kind of a silly rule because i think ethyl iodo cyclohexane makes more sense because it follows the rules that they present um however if you if you want to be perfectly correct that's the way to do it it just drives the point home a little more i guess all right now we are on to ooh, the real fun stuff So identify the following as identical enantiomers or diastereomers. It gives us these compounds. Okay, we've got A and B. So I look at A and I look at B. They're both one. These they both have hydroxyl groups on one and three carbons, and the cyclohexane. So they're both one three, but I see these are wedged up, and this one is wedged up, and that one's wedged down. That means this is like cis and this is trans. Remember when you have a cis and a trans or some, all of them are wedges and some of them are dashes. Um, let me rephrase that. Remember, if, if I were to take this and make them both wedges, that would be an enantiomer. But I only made one of them and therefore this is a diastereomer. So these are diastereomers. Okay, A and D. Okay, these are both definitely cyclohexane. They both have on the one and three group, a hydroxyl group, right? So one and three carbons, they have hydroxyl groups. And the cool thing about it is these are both pointed in the same direction. What about these two? I hope you agree, they're both pointed in the exact same direction. If these are both pointed in the exact same direction, whether it be up or whether it be down, these are actually the same identical molecule. Now, if you had had one hydroxyl group going up, they would have been diastereomers. Okay, so C and B. C and B, here you go. They look completely different, right? Um, different is not one of the choices here. Um, but if you go through and count the carbons, we got one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Over here, you got four, five, six carbons and two hydroxyl groups. So these are exactly the same thing, B and C, in terms of their formula. However, they're obviously very different, and these are constitutional isomers. And last but not least, we have B and D. B and D. Again, here we would have something that would be considered up and something that's down, versus here we have down and down. Remember, anytime you have something up and something down and something that's down and down, or vice versa, these are diastereomers. All right. Okay, so this is where size comes into play. It says arrange the following orders or following molecules in order of increasing energy. Okay, so in looking at this, remember if we have something axial, axial is higher energy. So here we have two methyl groups that are axial. This one is clearly the highest compared to the other ones. This has equatorial and that has an equatorial. So this one's the highest. So A is going to be greater. Now you're between these two things. Now remember when we talked about size? So here you have a carbon and here you have a fluorine. Now even the carbon has hydrogens on it. They really don't take up very much space. Hydrogens are like, do, do, do comparatively. Nevertheless, even it, it, it wouldn't even matter because if you compare these two, carbon over here is big compared to fluorine. The bigger something is, the more strain it causes in the molecule, the more it's pushing the rest of the molecule kind of away, if that makes sense, particularly if it's in an axial position. So as opposed to this little fluorine, which is in a tiny, tiny little spot, um, or a tiny, tiny little thing. Sorry, I'm getting a phone call there. So um, because of that, this actually has lower strain than this one because of its size. And therefore C would be the lowest and B would be in the middle, okay? This is tiny, so lower in energy, right? So I hope that makes sense. If this had been, for example, a bromine, like a big old thing, then this one would have been lower in energy than that one. Right, what do we got? 
we got next? Ooh, yay. You should realize this is gonna be a really long video. Huh? Okay, starting with the conformer, I'm gonna get some more paper. Do a 180 rotation in 60 degree increments and draw the energy diagram starting with the conformer. Okay, so I'm gonna start over here on my left. It says looking down this bond. All right, so if I were to look down this bond, I know that the front carbon here is going to have an ethyl group and the plane. I'm just gonna pretend that this right here is a complaint, is the plane. Remember, ET stands for ethyl. That's a two carbon group thing, okay? And here and here would be hydrogens. Okay, now behind it is this methyl group and a bromine group. Notice the bromine is in the same plane as the ethyl. So I'm gonna draw it up. One's down, one's up, like that. Now the methyl group is coming out at me, so the way I picture it, if I'm looking down the bond this way, as you can imagine, the bromines come, or the um, methyl group's coming out here. And we have an H here. So if you're not comfortable drawing this projection, go back and make sure you're really comfortable before we start doing this. All right. So this being said, let's move on and do the rest of the rotations. Now I drew this really big, which is kind of annoying, but I'll draw the next one a little bit smaller and on and on and on. All right, all I'm gonna do is rotate the back. So I'm just gonna turn it this way in 60 degree increments. So I'm gonna move the bromine over here. So I'm gonna draw the exact same thing. We got the ethyl down here with the hydrogens and hydrogens. And now the bromine is over here. The methyl is down here and the hydrogen's up here. Oh. And let's keep going. ET. Okay, and then BR is here. I'm moving it again, 60 degrees. That moves the methyl group over here and the hydrogen up here. Let's keep rotating. Now I'm moving the bromine down here. The methyl group is gonna go up here. And the hydrogen is gonna go this way. Let's keep going. Okay. Now I'm gonna move the bromine over here. Flip it this way. The methyl up here. And the hydrogen's coming out here. And then one more left. That's good, because we are out of space. We're gonna have the bromine up here. The hydrogen down here. And the methyl up here. Okay. All right, so this is, these are all the projections going at 60 degree increments of this particular thing right here. All right, cool. But the problem is, it says draw and energy diagram, starting with the given conformer. So we're gonna start here, we're gonna draw an energy diagram. In order to do that, we need to lo locate which are really high energy things and which are not energy things. Remember, when things are eclipsed, they are, um, when things are eclipsed, like put together really close, they're higher in energy. So this one would be higher in energy, this one's higher in energy, and this one's higher in energy. Which one's highest in energy though, depends on um, the, the bulkiness of the things, just like we talked about. If they're really bulky, they're gonna push each other away and cause a lot of strain and be higher energy molecules. So these three that I start are gonna be higher in energy than these three that are not, that are, that are gauche and put off to the side like this. All right, um, so let's look at the bulkiest things here. We have an ethyl group, right, which is made up of two carbons. I'm just gonna kind of draw it like that. We have a methyl group, which is made up of one carbon. carbon, And then we have this big old bromine group, right, up here. So we have an ethyl, a methyl, and a big old bromine 
a methyl, an ethyl, and a big old bromine, a methyl. Big old bromine. Here's like a big old bromine ethyl group, a methyl group. And last but not least, big old bromine ethyl and the methyl. Okay, where the really big things are put together, they're going to be the higher energy things. So if I were to look at those three things that I already starred that I know are going to be the higher energy, can you see how we got an ethyl and a methyl? And here we got an ethyl and a bromine. Those are definitely the biggest. This is going to be my highest energy one. And then over here, I just have ethyl, bromine, methyl. They're all kind of far apart, actually. They're relatively far apart. Okay, so this is definitely going to be my highest energy confirmation. Again, because the ethyl and bromine are really big and pushing each other away. All right, now let's look at these two and kind of see where they are relative. Here I have an ethyl and a methyl group, which are pretty close to each other. Um, so that's pretty high. And here we have an ethyl, bromine, and a methyl. They're all kind of far apart from each other, right? Even though they're gauche and they're going to be higher, or excuse me, even though they're eclipsed, they're going to be higher energy confirmation. Um, they're far apart from each other. So this one is going to be the next highest. And this one's going to be the lowest of those three. Now we can move on to the lower energy. So we dealt with that one. We dealt with that one. We dealt with that one. Now we're looking at these three confirmations. In this one, I have the really big thing and the other really big thing very far apart from each other, right? They're on complete opposite sides. That tends to be one of the most stable confirmations. Um, again, big things don't want to be next to each other. So let's keep that in mind. Let's look over here at this one. Uh, uh, look, see the ethyl, uh, the uh, ethyl, the bromine, and the methyl are all relatively close to each other, right? And then this one. The ethyl and bromine are close to each other. Cool. So hopefully you can see that this one, the ethyl, methyl, and bromine are all the closest to each other. So that would be, even though these are all going to be lower than the first three that we did, this would be a pretty high energy comparatively. We knew these were the farthest away from each other, so this is going to be like the lowest energy confirmation. And this third one over here is going to be somewhere between those two. Um, again, the ethyl and the bromine are still really close to each other, but the methyl at least is anti. It's way up here. Um, so that's going to be like somewhere in the middle here. And so what we'd get for an energy diagram is something like this. We write the energy here. and the reaction coordinate. Here. And you can just kind of follow as this goes to that, as that goes to that, as that goes to that, as that goes to that, how the energy changes in each situation. Again, this one was the lowest because they were the farthest away, and this one was the highest because they were the closest together, the big things. Right. Convert the following chair confirmation to a chair confirmation and do a ring flip. Okay, so this really tests to see how you're doing um, with visualizing this stuff and visualizing the fact that you're looking down a carbon carbon bond here to here. So this is one carbon, that's the other carbon, you're looking down it. All right, so um, let's go ahead and draw a chair confirmation. Let's figure out which carbon is which. Um, it really doesn't matter which, which one you're going to start with, but I'm going to say this one in the front. right? For some reason, I picture it better that it's this one, and then the one behind it is this one, then the carbon down here is this one, then the carbon back in the back of there is that one, etc. Okay, so if I pretend that this carbon right here, right out front, is this one, I know that this carbon has a hydrogen and a hydrogen. I don't need to draw anything, right? And then we go to the carbon behind it. It looks to me like the carbon behind it has a methyl group that's pointed straight up and a bromine group that's pointed down, like that. Okay, so this is the carbon in the front. This is the carbon that's in the back. Now we've moved on to this carbon, which is down here. 
Then we go up to the carbon that's in the back back there. So this, we're looking at the carbon in the back back there, and that's got a chlorine that's pointed up. And I don't see anything else. And then it goes to the carbon that's in the front, which would be this one right here. This carbon I see has an ethyl group pointed up. And as far as I can see, that's it. So I can write ET or I could have actually drawn the ethyl group on it. All right, so this would be what this actually represents. And you wanna make sure you're really comfortable with visualizing this kind of stuff because um, yeah, because I, 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 w I don't think I have a ring on there, but um, nevertheless, again, it's good to be able to visualize because I'm going to have you flip things and ask for lower energy things, etc. Okay, now it wants us to do a ring flip and show the equilibrium. In other words, show which one's more present in equilibrium, which is the most stable thing. Okay, so here we have that, and then when we flip it, we're going to get this other ring confirmation like this. And remember what was up stays up, just flips from equatorial to axial. So this is my one, two, three, and I'm not naming this thing, I'm just doing this for convenience purposes. This must be my one, two, three, four, five, six. So these are not the carbons for naming, they just help me keep track of things. So here my chlorine was up um, axial, so here it must be up equatorial, right? Now we move on to this one. I had an up ethyl, so therefore I must have a straight up ethyl. Then I have my three, my four, going this way. Ju, ju, ju. So I can't read my own writing. One, two, three, four. This was a five, six. That makes sense. A lot more sense. So I was on my six. Now this is my five. Now this is my four. Now on my three, I had a bromine going down. So I still have to have a bromine going down and then this methyl group going up. So my methyl group now must go up and equatorial. Here it was axial. Okay, so if we go to label these things um, and find which, which direction the equilibrium lies, remember we're looking at size, not mass necessarily. So um, let's just go ahead and and draw it out. So here we have a chlorine, which is pretty big compared to carbons, right? On an axial. Here we have a methyl on an axial. And we have a bromine, which is much bigger than chlorine, and an ethyl group, which are both on equatorial. Cool. Let's look over here. Here we have a methyl group, which is like a carbon, on the equatorial. We have a bromine group on the axial. And I know I'm not doing this in any particular order, I'm just making sure I cover it. We have an ethyl group. which is on the axial. And we have a chlorine, which is on, let me draw my chlorine a little bigger, chlorine, which is on the equatorial. Okay, so we wanna see which one is the lowest energy confirmation. Well, chlorine and carbon are both pretty small, right? Compared to the bromine and the ethyl group. This was an ethyl group, by the way. Chlorine and carbon are pretty small compared to ethyl and bromine. And these guys are really relatively big. You want the big things on the equatorial. Over here, I have the big things on the axial. So I got the ethyl and the bromine, which are on the axial group. So that for my most stable, is this way and equilibrium lies in that direction. All right, let's keep it going.
Okay, so how are the compounds related to each other? So you're gonna, for, you're gonna say if they're conformers, um, enantiomers, diastereomers, constitutional isomers, or no relationship whatever, whatsoever. Okay, so in this first one, um, I don't know about you, but one of the first things I notice is that these are actually pretty, some, pretty, um, very, very similar, right? But you'll notice that um, the methyl group is to the left of the chlorine over here, but the methyl group is to the right of the chlorine over here. And I think you'll agree if I drew a mirrored plane right here, and I were to just mirror this thing, we'd get a wedge right here, and we'd have a dashed CL. Do you agree that this and this are the same? I hope you do. And so essentially, these two are just mirror images. What do we call mirror images? We call them enantiomers. Okay. In this situation, we have this thing with a hydroxyl group and this thing with an ether group. Um, In this case, the ether group is pointed up. The hydroxyl group is also pointed up. Or you could just say they're pointed down and pointed down. So if you flip them, if you were to flip them around this way, they'd be down and down. And this also happens to be down, and this one's down. So like if we went to name these, I hope you agree we would name this trans, and we would also name that, or excuse me, we would name it cis, and this would also be named cis. And because of that, these are both the same or identical. Okay. Now we have this one. Um, right away, it almost looks like they're a mirror image. Like if you were to draw a plane right there, remember mirror image would be an antimer. We have an H and an H and an O and an O. We have a dashed OH, a dashed OH, a wedged H, a wedged H. But then when we get over here, you can see that the C2, that this, this um, ethanol group over here is, or excuse me, methanol group over here is on a wedge and over here it's on a dash. Remember, if you switch just one thing, these become, they're not mirror images, they become diastereomers. All right, so for this one, um, right away, I feel like if I were to twist this bond, to make these things, to make this go in the mirror plane, right? This thing that's coming out would all this, this bromine that's coming out at you would have to flip down and go down and into the into the page. So you'd end up with this. But if you're not sure, when in doubt, figure it out. Do R and S configuration. So here my bromine is a one, right? If I'm looking at just this carbon right here. This business over here would be my two, and this would be my three, so I go one, two, three. The H happens to be on a wedge, so that, or on a dash, excuse me, so that's good. So I'm going in counterclockwise direction, right? So this would be an S. And now I move on to this one. This would be one, this would be two, this would be three. I'm going like this in counterclockwise, but our H happens to be on a wedge, so we're going counter. But because it's on a wedge, it's the opposite, so this is an S. So I got an S and an S. And then over here, I have one, two, this, this business over here is two, and three. So I'm going that way. I don't have to change the direction because H is on a wedge. So one, two, three, this is also an S. And going this way, I've got one, two, three. Now I'm going this way, just counterclockwise. H is still on a dash. So this is also S. So S, 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 S. If we were to name this, um, uh, by the way, these are identical. But if we are named just, just for fun, this is a 1, 2, 3, 4 butane. It's a 2, 3. 2, comma, 3, excuse me. Di bromo butane. And we would put it 2s, comma, 3s, 2, 3, dibromo butane. So that is how we would write the name. Okay, Ooh, we're almost there. All right, so what is the lowest energy conformer of this thing? All right, we know that this and this must be in the same 
exact um, direction, right? So if we're going to put them up, put them up, down, put them down, and this must be in the other direction. So I'm going to go ahead, like I did in class, if it's on a wedge, I always put it up. If it's on dash, I put it down. Just makes it simpler for me. And now um, I'm going to want to put it onto this. And I'm going to go ahead and do one, two, three with my labeling, and one, two, three um, with this thing over here. So on my first one, I've got a, this tart butyl group, which is pointed up. Okay, we know that the pointed up has to be axial on this carbon right here. Remember, all the ups get an up, and all the downs get a down axial. Okay, this carbon next to it then, this two carbon, has to also be up, but the only up position for this one happens to be equatorial. And then I know that this ethyl group has to be pointed down when I get to this carbon right here, but the only down happens to be equatorial. Cool. Okay, now let's go ahead and do a ring flip so we can make sure we get the correct confirmation. That's going to be the lowest energy. So when we do a ring flip, remember this was, that carbon is now down here. This carbon is now here. That carbon is there. What was up stays up. So this T-butyl, which was pointed up, is still pointed up. It's just up equatorial now. This methyl group, which was pointed, um, which was also pointed up, right, is now up axial. And this beautiful ethyl group, which is pointed down, is still down, but it's going to be down axial, right? Okay, so this being said, we've got these two different uh, conformers of each other, um, but one of them is going to be lower in energy. Remember, we're always talking about bulky things. We want the bulky thing, the most bulky things to be on the equatorial position. Now, that might be kind of frustrating because right now you're like, hey, these, these has, this has two things that are on equatorial and this only has one. But if you look at the total carbons, right, and think about the size of it, this has two carbons and this has one carbon. These are on equatorial. And it has four carbons. One, two, three, four on axial. Over here, we have four carbons on equatorial and this two carbon plus one carbon, a total of three carbons, axial. So if that makes sense, you tell me which one is the lower energy conformer. I hope you agree. It's this one because it's got this really big bulky four carbon thing that's on equatorial. So this would be the lowest energy conformer. Um, of the of this thing right here. Now you could just have, just as easily have drawn it down, down. Um, so you could have done this one down, that one down, and that one up, um, and and gotten it right away. But that's not fun. It's more fun to talk about. All right, all right. Last but not least classify each as uh, substitution, elimination, or addition. Okay, so here we have OH, 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 and an O, and here we have all these OH and a CH3. Essentially this H, right, was replaced with a CH3. So this was a substitution. So anytime you add something, you substitute. Um, now here, everything looks to be about the same, except for here we have a double bond to oxygen. And over here, I hope you agree, we added something. We broke that double bond. Remember, when you go from a double bond to a single bond, you've added something. This is called addition. However, you have also decreased the number of carbon-oxygen bonds. Over here, we had two carbon to oxygen, carbon to oxygen bonds, right? Because we had this double bond. Over here, we only have one carbon to oxygen bond. Even though I didn't write it there, it's good to remember, this would also be a reduction. Remember, a reduction versus oxidation. If I'd gone in the opposite direction and increased carbon oxygen bonds, it would have been an oxidation. Okay. 
make sure to review the lecture, know how to do energy diagrams um, for 6b. I will also, again, obviously, we're going to lecture over it um, this week. And yeah, I hope that helps. So hopefully this gives you guys a good direction to go. If I made any mistakes, please let me know so I can make sure to um, edit it or at least send out a message to let you know. I wouldn't be surprised if I did make any mistakes because, you know, I'm me. So, all right. Have a great week, you guys. Take care.